YouTube and thank you for joining me for another quick uh, video breakdown. Today we're going to be taking a look at Wish Dragon. If you haven't heard of this movie before, I was actually pleasantly delighted to actually see it come out. So Wish Dragon is actually comes from the debut director Chris Applehorns. So this movie was actually made by base animation in China for a Chinese audience that may have international appeal. So China's really been getting into some of this really interesting movie making thing. So it's good to see that more of this stuff is getting exposed. Um, the original release for this movie was way back in July 2019. The, the, the original release got pushed and then it got pushed again until eventually it came out in China in January 2021 and it's come out for international release on Netflix through June 2021. Which is why we can now talk about it and see it and check it out and go, oh, glorious. Now I based my expectations on this movie out of Abominable and I absolutely, I really enjoyed that. So my expectations were fairly high. So I'm gonna pull apart a few scenes and just dig into some of the camera work that was made this film really entertaining. Some things that I really liked about this was first off the lighting and the colors inside it. it. It really does pop. It has a really nice feel and mood to the whole movie. This first part, this first scene here, I just love the way this is actually set up to be traveling negatively compared to anything that I've sort of expected before. Now, I really love arches. Arches are really great in here. And you can see that nice arch over on this third. So it's given us something to kind of look at. All our leading lines lead back to this little arrow down here, this archway. So you think, oh yeah, we've given our space for something to happen. So when you actually do go, you're expecting our main character to pop in, which is what exactly what he does. But what I really love is he's turned around and he's actually traveling in this sequence, traveling right to left which is usually when you're going away from your adventure, you're usually, or your adventure's finished. Traditionally, in traditional movement, that is then where he's going. He's done it and he's going home. More forward than left and right, but we've got all this space over on this side, which is when you look at it, it's, it's we've got a few things on the wall, you know, we've got a bit of clutter which has been put in here, little pots and pans, and we've got a nice hint of light in here as well, which is really cool to see, but most of this wall is in shadow, and the shadow's kind of really nice and soft, and the light's over this side, so he's heading towards a dark, shady place, which I, which is really pretty. And we soon turn around, and we've come into what I thought was really nice, this big U, framed out U in this, this broken wall in the dead, dead center. What I really dig about this is not only is it dead center then, but we've also then got ourselves a really low horizon line. So the horizon line's here, but then continuing that left to uh, right to left motion, we've also got the pathway, which kind of lingers off left to right. But we've ended up with the character being dead center in, start, in, in the shot before, and we've come to this one, which is also dead center. But we've got this beautiful U shape, which frames up the whole shot, which is a, a, a really nice arc to kind of go color, yellow, it's the only real yellow wall in the whole thing, which is dead center. All the other colors are like greens and whites. So your center of focus is definitely taken deep into the, sh into the frame um, with color and with light and with the shapes which are all built in there. Um, we turned around within this sequence as well. We've kept, um, what I really like about this is we've kept that U shape which we had before. We've kept that just right on the edge of frame. So just to uh, link up between those shots as we go back and forwards between where we are in space, they've just kept this just right on the edge of frame. It's not intrusive. Uh, kept the main action dead center. And we've pulled up that archway which we had back here is now dead center as well, where we started with it on the uh, on the edge of the right frame to be brought, bringing us in and him traveling a uh, right to left. Now that uh, that alleyway is now dead center. So we've brought around to be cutting straight back and forwards from front to back to front to back. So we've started off with uh, traveling this way. We've gone front to back, front to back, still with that idea of left, uh, right to left. And we've kept some of these beautiful shapes in between these cuts. 
So it's really nice to see that there's a consistency within the geometry, within the language of the shots in this sequence. And this is what I found, this shot I found really interesting after going right to left, we started getting confusing, or we start confusing our character and now we've turned it on a bit of an angle. I, I really like how we've kept the shadows all on this side still. I thought that's really neat and we've brought the sunlight a lot. This is the first time in this sequence we've actually got a lot of sunlight, but all the sun is over on this side, but we've distinctly got two halves to this frame. He's come through the archway and we've kept pushing. He's now walking left to right, but down the, down the hill, which is what's been sorely cons fairly consistent within this sequence is he's moving back to front, back to front. And the one yellow thing back in here again, uh, that was really cool. We've got something yellow. We've got the scooter back there that's yellow now too. But uh, the action has now changed. So we've gone from moving right to left to left to right. And I really dug, this is just something which I think visually in their mind was really, really clever in that we've got all these shapes down along here which lead us up to or into our main point of focus, which is also a very contrasting color compared to everything else. When we look at it, everything leads up to this beautiful, bright red door. Uh, it's just this framing within these that looks really good. Like the background's all soft blue in the background. You know, it's all a very consistent sort of blue tone. Um, then in the walls, you know, they're all washed out greens and yellows. And even, even the reds are a real washed out stone, washed out red, you know, aged and dated. The atmospherics in there adds that depth to it as well too. If you look back in here, you know, you've got the uh, layers of atmosphere sort of built back in there and as it gets back back deeper within the frame, again, you look at this line of just haze which is built in there and it just softens all these buildings back here. So that line of haze or that atmospherics adds to the depth and helps keep this, uh, keep this one centerpiece which we've got, this which is what our focus is. It's definitely meant to draw your attention. It's very crisp, very clean. And then all the stuff which is, you know, all crisp and clean in the foreground then as well. If you look at it, this is all in shadow, but this is all the clean, clear stuff, which is really in shadow, bit of broken light falling on these bits and pieces back here, but it's not predominant. Whereas our main center of focus, clearly in light, clearly in focus, high center in frame. Uh, I really like just the construction of this shot. And then, it's, then it leads us to this beautiful little reveal, which I just have to play because it's such a beautiful little reveal, the way we reveal this next character. It's going from center, center reveal here. If we go, you know, purely center and looking this way, about to arm travel this way. there he is. I really dig just that little reveal. It's like, it's not something you can do that often because the environments don't allow you, you know, a lot of environments don't allow for broken walls or things like that. So it's great that he didn't open the door and just reveal him that way. I think it was a real clever idea just to kind of push it off to one side and go around this broken jaggedy wall to reveal this character sitting there playing. I, I love just the way that they do that. Sticking with the idea of reveals, I really dig um, when we when you when you watch the movie. I this environment, little one bedroom apartment, is split into different rooms, and the way that they capture things within here with the camera language is really really neat. To start off with, what I kind of really dug, yeah, yeah this particular shot. Again, I'm uh, I'm a bit of a and being a bit being an animator i really dig the way that characters can get in and out of scenes but if you look here right here dead third on this side eyes 
just above center. So you've got the straight look across from him, looking eye to eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and he's out of there. And you've just got this reveal again of the other character who can actually hear what he's talking about. I really like the way that reveal works. It's just eight frames and you've got a character jumping out. It's just beautifully done. Um, again, if, oh, with focus, if you look in the background, she's in the light. She's got a clear silhouette. If you look at her color, she's got a distinct different color to what the background is. So there's a real clear light. All this in the back is in shadow, even though there's a lot of detail back here, it has also got you know, a little soft uh, depth of field to it. He has as well, nice soft depth of field, but he's got a really nice edge light to him to bring him off just where he sits. So I really like the way that's sort of constructed. And you've got this little sharp corner just in frame. It's just really nice, that one. This particular part, it's really hard thinking about going through in their confined spaces, how you actually capture something which is a bit bigger in concept and idea within their little confined space of that apartment. Um, I think this, like this bedroom here is definitely something where they would have had to shuffle space to get these shots. So this particular shot is really cleverly structured within camera work and models to get something so nice as we've got the character walking in from out of shot. He's just walked in, he's put the teapot down, then he's moved across all the way over to right on the edge of frame over here. So he's pushed past the third and he's right over there on the edge of frame, um, all within, you know, uh, entering the shot. So it's pushed all the way over. Um, and that then allows for the motion uh, to move through and introduce the camera just pushing through this wall, which gives us a distinct line down the middle. And it's not in the middle. So our main character still has the majority of space here. Even though we've now introduced this other sneaking peering um, group in the back, you know, they are, there's no reason why they couldn't have, they're on the other side of the wall. Why would they have the darkness there? Um, but it's definitely a lot creepier with them all bustled up in here in the soft or in the dark light, dark side of this wall, and all on top of each other as well, which is really nice, you know, just, again, piling on top of themselves, leaning right on the wall with his ears against the wall. And we've got a nice solid chunk of wood, which just defines the two. But living in those apartment circumstances, you really feel the claustrophobia of it. And you know, you don't get any privacy, which is what they're really implying here, that there's nothing they can do after to get away from everybody knowing. So, but just this, the framing of this, this is only one third. He's got two thirds, he's the main character. And then we've got, you know, a lot more characters on this side doing their thing. But just the framing of this is really pretty to introduce that camera move across, have a wall separating them, which is just a model change within this room. You know, they would have just had to make an alternate model um, just for this shot to be able to get this shot to happen. And it's just a slide across there, there, and it slides back in. Beautifully done. But this, for some reason, this shot stuck in my memory. I absolutely keep coming back to this shot. Um, it's, I guess it's the most little intimate shot or one of, one of the most intimate shots in here, but he's sitting or he's about to sit on the bed just like that. And he's there all by himself, very lonely. Um, or not lonely, but he's having a tough time. I mean, you look at the lighting which they've got in here, he's got a really nice light coming in off of him to get him off of this dark stripy background. But you've also got a real, the other dark wall right here on the side as well. And you've only got this little sliver, which is what I really like. I thought this was clever, this little sliver 
of light back down in here, which is a window to the outside world or a window out of his, um, out of his little room or out of his confinement. So he's having a real tough time. He's only got this little, a little bit of outside world which he can come into. But what I really like about the framing of just having this little split here, just push just on the edge of the third. So the third's actually on the inside of that. So it's just on the on the outside of the third. He's got over two thirds to play in to occupy. It's, it's There's a lot of texture, there's a lot of detail, but there's no real other cluttered shapes back here. It's everything is here to support him being in this shot. But as we play through it, I really like that the mother back here is cut off. You don't see all of her. You just see her. She's very clearly lit, but she is only such a partial sort of thing back here that it just whispers so nicely that what she's putting, what she's saying and the emotion you have with her, everything is about him. She's there, but she's such a minor background character. She's cut in half. She only just appears in this little bit of a crack on the frame on the third, just over the third. So she's really pushed out. But I really like the way that they've thought about framing this and capturing this to actually get this shot. They've bumped bumped out the back wall, because if we looked from the shot before, there was a wall right at the back of his bed. So they've bumped out the wall, they've put the camera outside the outside the room, looking in to be able to get it all so flat. Otherwise you would have had to have a real warpy lens in there, looking at something like 25 or something, when this looks more like a 50 or even an 80 to get this so flat, so that these characters look so pretty in this shot. So the camera is way outside, looking into the wall, and when you look at them, they both look similar sizes. So she, you know, they've come in really, really nicely. And just the storytelling within the framing of this shot got me so super excited to come back and actually talk about it. I'm kind of geeking out about this shot. The final, the quick final one, which I thought was really good, just this watching within the hand. It's really clear to see he fused the hand back to the camera to frame the hand, to frame him inside the hand. And just the storytelling of him as they go. Well, thank you so much for sticking with me. If you got all the way through this and you got something out of it, make sure you leave a like. Um, I hope you could, uh, do definitely go see Wish Dragon. Find it somewhere, it's really worth it. I totally enjoyed it, I think it's great, and I hope to see more stuff like this. More stories with such an emotional connection, which I think is something just personally, uh, just personally I really got into this. Um, you'll still soon be seeing some more videos, but as you can tell, my background's gone, and yes, I'm in a transition stage of not knowing what's going on, but stuff's happening. Hopefully I'll keep these videos rolling out when I find cool stuff to talk about. But until the next time, I'll say...